In today's video, we present an abridged version of last week's official Pulp Alley livestream entitled The Dangerous Delivery, wherein the phantom agents confront the insidious Shadow Tong in a violent clash at Old Mother Gerhardt's filling station. Well, hi folks, this is Lee from SkirmishWarGames.com. Welcome to the channel. I'm here with Lynn. Hello. And, uh... This Sunday, this past Sunday, we just recently participated in our first remote live stream, a game of Pulp Alley 2nd Edition, hosted by game designer Dave Phipps over on the uh, official Pulp Alley YouTube channel. So that was a great deal of fun, and if you can, we highly recommend that you uh, check it out, check out the full 90-minute live stream, which is a scenario entitled The Dangerous Delivery, and uh, you can see that on Dave's channel to get the full cinematic gameplay experience, but... Uh, just for fun, and with uh, Dave's blessing, we're presenting the abridged version of that battle report here today. Call it the snack size version or the uh, highlight reel, if you will. But either way, it should give you a good synopsis of the shocking events leading up to and during the now infamous massacre at the Gerhardt filling station. And it was a bloody mess. It was a bloody mess. There was kung fu fighting and bullets flying and dogs biting and, yeah, even a tiger showed up. So as you may know, Pulp Valley 2nd Edition is a tabletop skirmish game that reenacts the hard-boiled, two-fisted adventures of pulp genre-type heroes in the style of Doc Savage, The Shadow, Dick Tracy, Buck Rogers, Zorro, and countless others. So in today's scenario, Lynn and I are playing the Phantom Agents, which is a league of heroic adventurers consisting of the pistol-packing Phantom Ace, he's the leader, and his two plucky sidekicks, Gage and Roswell. And so Gage is sort of a clever gadget girl who, uh, in this scenario, is rocking a suit of armor. And Roswell is a lion-hearted canine in the spirit of Rin Tin Tin with fast legs and a mighty bite. So as one of their perks, the Phantom Agents have access to a network of supporters. And today they'll be joined by two local police officers, Sergeant O'Malley, who's a second-level shooter, and uh, Officer Flanagan, who is a level one scout. Now, Officer Flanagan is not on the table quite yet. Due to some pregame dice rolling, Officer Flanagan got sent for coffee and donuts, but he'll be back in time for turn two. And so, uh, Phantom Ace and Company are attempting to thwart Dr. Fang and his infamous Shadow Tong. So apparently, Gearhart's filling station here is actually the front for an international smuggling operation. And so, Dr. Fang and his cadre of hatchetmen are trying to escape off the board with as uh, many packages, uh, aka objectives, as possible while the phantom agents are trying to stop them by any means they can. So if you look on the board, you can see there's uh, two unclaimed objectives, one in the pig pen and one in the truck bed, and those are marked by uh, yellow dots. And Dr. Fang's group actually has three of them. I think Dr. Fang has a minor objective, Okie Joe has a minor objective, and uh, Ying Ying, who is a shapeshifter who can turn into a tiger, she is uh, carrying the major objective, presumably in a backpack, so that when she turns into a tiger, uh, she'll still be able to hold on to it. But in tiger form, she can't pick up objectives, but she can still run with what she has. So among the members of the Shadow Tong, I believe only Dr. Fang, Oki Joe, and Yin Ying can um, carry objectives. The rest of the guys are kind of lowly goons, and so they can't pick up and carry objectives. But they can still cause a lot of mischief. And I presume their plan is going to be to try to mob the members of the Phantom Agents, since uh, we are outnumbered. Okay, Lynn, I think that covers the basics. Let's see how the action unfolds as we enter turn one of the dangerous delivery in uh, today's game of Pulp Alley, second edition. And Lynn, is Roswell ready to bite some smugglers? Yes, he is. <laughs> yeah, Roswell, even though he's a dog and he can't uh, pick up objectives or things like that, he's pretty useful because he's fast. He can move 16 inches and he has a powerful bite. His bite is our most powerful brawl weapon. So uh going to bite some uh, smuggler ankles. Yes. Okay, here we are, turn one of six turns in uh, The Dangerous Delivery, and each league has drawn three fortune cards, which may come into play, depending on circumstances. And if you notice down in the uh, lower left corner, there's some blue tape, and that is the escape zone for Dr. Fang and the Shadow Tong. So if they can uh, get any of the objectives across that blue line, then that'll be victory points for them. The Phantom Agents won the initiative roll, which means uh, we have the status of director, and so we can dictate which league has to activate a character until all characters are activated for that turn. 
Director status can change throughout the game when uh, certain characters have a victory in combat or other conditions take place. But for now, we are the director, and so we are going to direct uh, Dr. Fang's uh, cadre to move a character because we want to see what he does and then respond to that. So the villainous Dr. Fang is an unearthly character, which means he's uh, somewhat resistant to attack, but uh, it also makes him slow. So his max movement in a turn is 6 inches, unless he's rushing an enemy, in which case he can move 12. So Dave selects Dr. Fang as his first character to activate, and he moves Dr. Fang about 6 inches toward the back of this truck, giving him some cover and uh, still moving him toward the direction of the exit point. Next, we ask Dave to activate another character, and he chooses Cutter, who is a level 2 character, which means he's a little more dangerous than the level 1 followers. And Cutter is going to run 12 inches up to the back of that shed. We respond by having Sergeant O'Malley run about 7 inches toward the corner of the dilapidated storage shed, which will give him some cover, and also hopefully line of sight on Dr. Fang. And he does get line of sight toward Dr. Fang, but since Dr. Fang is unearthly, O'Malley uh, can't use his shoot skill, so he gets just a single D6 to try to shoot Dr. Fang with his service revolver. So O'Malley scores one success, but Dr. Fang easily dodges it because he's pretty spry for an old villain. Since we don't want members of the Shadow Tong to uh, rush the end zone, since we don't have that many characters, we decide to move Phantom Ace up behind Sergeant O'Malley to provide some much-needed fire support. Drawing his twin U.S. Army Colt 45s, Phantom Ace blazes away at the villainous Dr. Fang. But again, since Dr. Fang is unearthly, Phantom Ace can't use his shooting skill. He has to roll with finesse instead, which brings him down from 4d10 to 3d10. He scores just a single success, and unfortunately, Dr. Fang easily dodges. Since the Phantom Agents only have Gage and Roswell left to activate, we decide to hold them in reserve and ask Dave to activate some of his characters instead. He chooses Ping, who runs up behind the shed and stands next to Cutter. He's immediately followed by fellow hatchetmen Wang and Lu, which means that Dr. Fang now has four supporters ready to back him up as he shuffles toward the exit zone. On the opposite side of the street, Dave still has three characters to activate. That's Chen, Oki Joe, and Yin Ying. Chen is just a level one follower, so he cannot pick up or carry objectives. Oki Joe, however, and uh, Yin Ying can carry objectives. In fact, they're each uh, carrying one already but they might want to pick up some more. But uh, at any rate, we've asked Dave to activate his characters, and uh, he is going to do so. Perhaps eyeing a decisive victory, Yin Ying runs 12 inches toward the pickup truck, which just happens to have a minor objective in the bed, so perhaps she's going to try to pick that up. Oki Joe, a level 2 ally of Dr. Fang's, also runs up to the pickup. Now, he's currently carrying a minor objective, but that wouldn't stop him from getting into the pickup bed and uh, trying to get that other objective if he so desired. And finally, Chen, a level one follower who cannot pick up or carry objectives, is also going to run up to the pickup, presumably to ready himself in case he needs to become a human shield and protect uh, Oki Joe and Yin Ying. So there they are, well positioned to try to nab that minor objective from the pickup truck and or run around the back of the filling station and uh, try to get to the exit point. Now that all the Shadow Tongue have activated, it's time to let Gage and Roswell have a turn. <coughs> Originally, I was trying to get Gage all the way from the rocks to the filling station, but I forgot she was wearing armor, which cuts her movement in half, so the tree will just have to do. Roswell, being the speedy canine that he is, easily makes it to the filling station, where he can take on smugglers coming from either direction. Okay, I think everybody's activated for turn one. So on the Phantom Agent side, we have Phantom Ace and Officer O'Malley over here by the shed. Armor-clad Gage has found a spot underneath this shady tree, while Roswell has made it all the way to the wall of the filling station. As for the members of the Shadow Tong, we find the nefarious Dr. Fang taking cover behind a pickup truck. Four of his hatchetmen are concealed nearby behind the shed, ready to pounce. And uh, over behind the filling station... Yin Ying, Oki Joe, and Chen appear to be closing in on a minor objective. So that's where everyone's at for the moment. There are uh, no recovery checks to make because no one's been injured. And uh, now we go into turn two. 
So at the beginning of turn two, after each team has drawn a fortune card, Officer Flanagan finally shows up with the coffee and the donuts, and we decide at this point to kind of place him back in the end zone in case somebody slips through so he can be sort of the last line of defense. Since we're still the director, we get to decide which league moves first. So our thought is activate Officer O'Malley, have him move up into short range of Dr. Fang, and then open fire. Unfortunately for our plans, Dave has drawn and is playing the parlay card, which means no running, brawling, or shooting for any characters this turn, and presumably no uh, drinking, smoking, or dancing either. So apparently Dr. Fang has convinced us that he's just an ailing old man and that he's ready to surrender, and so we've momentarily lowered our guns, uh, which will, of course, allow the hatchet men to sneak a little bit closer and prepare to chop us to pieces. Reluctantly honoring the truce, Sergeant O'Malley nonetheless moves forward into an open area near a prize pig so he can get a closer look at Dr. Fang. Taking advantage of the temporary ceasefire, Dr. Fang moves up, takes cover behind another vehicle, and is now just slightly closer to his overall goal. Rightfully suspicious about Dr. Fang's sincerity, Phantom Ace moves forward into the clearing as well, providing Sergeant O'Malley some backup. We're still the director, so we ask Dave to activate a character, and he activates Yin Ying, and she's going to leap into the back of the pickup truck and try to claim that minor objective. To succeed, first she needs to draw a peril card and then defeat it, and so she draws a one might challenge, which should be pretty easy, except she only has uh, two dice worth of might, so perhaps there's a rat trap in there or a rattlesnake guarding the uh, plot point, but uh, she has to defeat a one might challenge, and she fails. She gets zero successes, so she failed the peril. So now she needs to make a one-die health check to avoid being injured, and she fails that too, so Yin Ying is injured. This is great news for the Phantom Agents, because Yin Ying is a level 3 sidekick, so if she takes one more injury, she'll be down, and if she uh, fails a recovery check at the end of the turn after that, then she would be out of the game, and that uh, major plot point would be left on the ground. However, if Yin Ying can avoid any other injuries this turn, she'll be able to try to recover from her soul injury at the end of the turn during the recovery phase. So since Yin Ying was unsuccessful in claiming the minor plot point, Dave has Oki Joe make an attempt, and Oki Joe needs to uh, somehow defeat a one finesse peril. But he fails, so now he needs to make a one die health check, and he fails that too, so Oki Joe is injured by the rat trap or the rattlesnake or the rattlesnake in the rat trap. Regardless, as a level 2 ally, Oki Joe can only take one injury before he's knocked down. So he is knocked down and he'll need to make a recovery check at the end of the turn. And if he fails, he's out of the game. Basking in our unexpected good fortune, we ask Dave to uh, move some of his characters since we're still the director. So he decides to move his hatchetman out from behind the shed presumably to confront Phantom Ace next turn when our tenuous ceasefire is ended. So suddenly, Sergeant O'Malley and Phantom Ace find themselves confronted by a cadre of hatchetmen, while Dr. Fang laughs and uh, old Mother Gerhardt's prize pig is understandably concerned. Since Ace and O'Malley are tied up on the other side of the street, Roswell and Gage are going to try circling around the filling station to eventually engage the rest of the Shadow Tongue. Once Officer Flanagan sees that Roswell and Gage are making a move, he moves up as well, taking position behind the trusty tree. Officer Flanagan was the last activation of turn two, so now we're in the recovery phase. So Dave has two recovery checks to make. One for Yin Ying, who was injured but not knocked over, and one for Oki Joe, who was injured and knocked over, and so if he fails his uh, recovery check, he's out of the game. Yin Ying rolls for recovery, and she fails, so she is still injured, now Oki Joe has to roll. And he fails as well, so he's out of the game, so whatever uh, booby trap Old Mother Gerhardt set up to protect her contraband, it uh, took out poor Oki Joe. And so with that, the uneasy truce between the Shadow Tong and the Phantom Agents is over, and we head into turn three. So at the start of turn three, both teams draw a fortune card, and it looks like we're about to find out what happens when you bring hatchets to a gunfight. Since close quarters is perhaps where you don't want to be in a hatchet fight, 
we have Phantom Ace move back to the corner of the building so he can get a little cover and he's got a bit more room to have his 45s do their deadly work. Phantom Ace chooses to shoot at Cutter, who is a level 2 ally of Dr. Fang, meaning he's stronger than a level 1 follower, but not as powerful as a level 3 sidekick. Phantom Ace is just outside of short range, but uh, he'll still get 4d10 to shoot with, because he is a very shooty character. Cutter, on the other hand, is very dangerous in a brawl, because he has the Swarm special ability. That means in hand-to-hand, -hand, he can choose to draw one of his fortune cards and make uh, the opponent... Uh, face that peril, but uh, he's not in hand-to-hand -hand now, and in fact, he has no shooting ability at all, so all he can do is dodge as Phantom Ace throws lead his direction. Phantom Ace unleashes 45 caliber Justice on Cutter, getting four hits, while Cutter gets zero dodges, so Cutter is in deep trouble. He needs to pass four health checks to avoid being injured. And he only passes one of them. So Cutter, a level 2 character, is injured and down. So he'll need to make a recovery roll at the end of the turn. Sergeant O'Malley is a level 2 shooter. He is going to uh, shoot at Wang, who is one of uh, Dr. Fang's level 2 allies. Unfortunately, O'Malley only scores one hit. Now Wang could dodge, but instead he's going to shoot back. So he's shooting back with 3d6s. Wang scores three hits uh, versus O'Malley's one hit. O'Malley chooses not to block any of those hits, so uh, O'Malley will need to make three health checks, and Wang will need to make one. O'Malley fails one of the health checks, so he's injured, and as a level 2 character, that means he's knocked over. And then Wang makes his health check, so he's fine. So he took a hit, but he's still standing. And since Dave won that combat, that means he's now the director, so he gets to uh, dictate which league moves next, and I think he's going to move next. So Dr. Fang normally only has six inches of movement, unless he's rushing. So in this case, he is going to rush Phantom Ace and engage him in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So Dr. Fang attacks Phantom Ace using his brawl skill, so that's 3d10. And it looks like he got two successes, a four and a seven. Phantom Ace will respond with defensive fire, but because Dr. Fang is unearthly, he has to use his finesse skill instead of his shooting skill, so that's just 3d10. He scores just a single hit, and Dr. Fang is going to choose to block that with one of his own hits, meaning that Phantom Ace now has to make a one-die health check. Which, fortunately, he passes, so he's not injured, so go Phantom Ace. Dave is still the director, so he's going to choose who activates next. He's going to select Wang. Wang is fresh from his gunfight with Officer O'Malley, and he is going to dust himself off and rush Phantom Ace and join the big brawl. So Phantom Ace has already been in a gunfight this turn, as well as a brawl, so his brawl skill is down to 2d10. Now he could try to dodge, but he's going to fight on, so he's going to get 2d10 to brawl, and Wang will get 2d6. So Phantom Ace scores two hits, and Wang also scores two hits, so they're both going to have to make two health checks each to see if anyone's injured. So Phantom Ace rolls a 7 and a 10, so he passes both health checks. Wang rolls a 4 and a 1, so he fails one health check. Wang tumbles to the ground, and because we were successful in combat, we uh, regain the directorship. So just to take stock where everybody is here in the middle of turn 3, we have Phantom Ace and Dr. Fang in a furious brawl. Sergeant O'Malley and Cutter are both injured and on the ground, while another hatchetman, I think that might be Lou, stands nearby. Yin Ying is standing next to not one, but two minor objectives that she could pick up, but uh, she is injured, and she's already carrying the major objective, so she may have to decide what she wants to do, and uh, Chen is right there, standing on some boxes next to her, acting as a bodyguard. And then we also have Ping, Gage, and Roswell, as well as Officer Flanagan, and who knows what they'll do here in the bottom half of turn three, so let's find out. Roswell would really like to run around the filling station and brawl with Yin Ying, since she's holding the major plot point. However, Chen is in the way. So unfortunately for Chen, he's going to get introduced to Roswell's mighty bite. Roswell is biting with 5d8, and Chen is doing defensive fire with 3d6. They each score one hit. Roswell could elect to block. Instead, he's going to let the hit go through, so they'll both need to roll a health check. Chen and Roswell both fail their health checks. Roswell takes an injury, 
and Chen is removed from the board in a flurry of teeth. Yeah, poor Chen was just a level one follower, so he gets uh, no chance for a recovery check. He is just gone. Okay, we only have two characters left to activate in turn three, so that is uh, Gage and Officer Flanagan, and Officer Flanagan is a level one scout. So even though Officer Flanagan is not very resilient, we're going to send him around the back of the filling station in case Roswell needs some help. So Officer Flanagan is going to move that way. Feeling that Flanagan and Roswell have things well in hand, Gage decides to go around the front of the filling station and see how Ace is holding up. As Gage rounds the corner, she sees one of Fang's hatchetmen standing in the street. It looks like Ping. Gage pulls her trusty three-quarter inch wrench from her belt and chucks it at Ping. Ping fires back with his hatchet. Both characters have a 2d6 shooting attack. Gage scores two hits with her wrench, while Ping misses completely with his hatchet. After the wrench bounces off of Ping's skull, he has to make two health checks. He misses both and is removed from the game. So I believe that's all the activations for the Phantom Agents. So now Dave is going to activate Lou, one of his second level allies, and Lou is going to rush over and join the big brawl with Phantom Ace. So Phantom Ace had managed to knock down Chen in the last exchange, but now Lu rushes in to take his place. So Phantom Ace has already been in three fights this turn. He shot once, he brawled twice, and so now he's down to just 1d10 if he wants to brawl. His dodge skill is only 2d8, but that looks like that's going to be the best option for him. We decide to play our sidestep card, giving Phantom Ace an additional dodge die, and at the same time, Dave plays the sucker punch card, which brings uh, Lou's brawl up to 4d6. So Lou got two successes to start with. He is going to use his brute special ability and his league's uh, short range perk to reroll the other dice. That gives him one more success for a total of three successes. Phantom Ace dodges with 3d8. He successfully dodges twice, so one hit goes through, which means he'll have to make a one die health check which he passes, so Phantom Ace avoids injury once again. He must have sewn some Kevlar into his flight jacket. Since the Shadow Tong is rapidly running out of henchmen, bold action is required. So Yin Ying abandons the two minor plot points in the truck bed, moves to the front of the filling station, and transforms into her tiger form, a giant cat named Shadow. Furious fighting in turn three has left the filling station grounds littered with injured men and a couple of injured beasts. So let's see who recovers and who succumbs to their wounds during the recovery phase. The first check is for Roswell, the courageous canine, and he fails his recovery check, so he is still wounded. Next up is Shadow the Tiger, and she recovers. So Yin Ying's tiger form recovers from its injury, so she is now uninjured. Cutter, the level 2 hatchet man, was literally riddled with bullets at the beginning of turn 3, so let's see if he recovers. And he does not. Too many bullet holes to the chest, so Cutter is removed from play. Next up is Officer O'Malley, who was knocked down by a thrown hatchet. And he recovers. So O'Malley is back on his feet and ready to join the fight. Next up is Wang, who was knocked down by Phantom Ace. And Wang recovers, so he's back on his feet. So now Phantom Ace is brawling with three members of the Shadow Tong all by himself. So I believe that's the end of turn three, and so now we head into turn four. So at the start of turn four, each team draws a fortune card, and the Phantom Agents still enjoy director status, so we're going to be able to uh, choose which league activates first. So far, Dr. Fang has lost four of his hatchetmen. They've been brought down by Rat Trap, Wrench, dog bite, and gunfire, so his uh, forces are dwindling. Left on the table, we have Dr. Fang and two hatchetmen, and they are currently in a brawl with Phantom Ace. Sergeant O'Malley has recovered from his hatchet wound, so he's drawn his service pistol, and he's going to get back in the fray. Gage is uh, surveying the situation to see which way she should go. Her decision will probably be influenced by Shadow the Tiger, who is emerging from the filling station. And then we have Roswell back by the pickup truck, and... Uh, Officer Flanagan, who's apparently hanging out back enjoying his coffee and donuts. For our first activation, we're going to ask the newly recovered Sergeant O'Malley to move six inches toward the Tiger and then try to bring it down with his trusty 38 service revolver. He's shooting with 3d6 and the Tiger is dodging with 4d8. 
Sergeant O'Malley scores three hits, so good shooting, Sergeant. And uh, the Tiger only dodges two, so Shadow needs to make two health checks. Shadow makes both of her health checks, so she's not injured. Right about now, Sergeant O'Malley is wishing he hadn't left the Tommy gun back in the squad car. Fortunately for Sergeant O'Malley, he does have a friend nearby. If you remember, the last time we saw Gage, she was behind the pickup, lobbing a wrench at Ping, so she's actually in position to shoot the tiger. So Gage is going to move up to the edge of the pickup truck to get within short range. She's going to use a 3d6 attack. Shadow's going to dodge with a 4d8. Gage scores three successes, but unfortunately Shadow dodges them all, so that is one wily tiger. Hearing all the commotion from the other side of the building, Officer Flanagan drops his bear claw and races forward, and he takes a shot at the tiger. So he's going to be shooting with 2d6 versus her 4d8 dodge. Officer Flanagan takes aim and fires, scores one success, which the tiger easily dodges. Despite our best efforts, all attempts to contain the tiger have failed. Phantom Ace is locked in combat, so the only member of the team free to move is Roswell. Roswell could try to bite the tiger, but sensing that Phantom Ace is in trouble, he bolts out into the street instead. Having dodged a literal hail of gunfire, Shadow the Tiger sees her opening and bounds toward the exit zone. She moves a full 16 inches with the major objective and takes cover in a nearby boulder field. On the opposite side of the street, Dr. Fang and two hatchetmen attempt to take down Phantom Ace. Wang attacks with 3d6 while Phantom Ace dodges with 2d8. <laughs> Phantom Ace dodges both attacks, but Wang gets to reroll one die because of his brute ability. And that misses as well, so Phantom Ace successfully dodged the first hatchet man. Because Phantom Ace successfully dodged, he's able to withdraw one inch, which takes him out of base-to-base -base contact with all three members of the Shadow Tong. Dr. Fang uses this opportunity to shuffle his max move of six inches toward the exit zone, which brings him over by this uh, junked car over here. Phantom Ace pursues his arch enemy, pistols at the ready, and prepares to open fire. Because Dr. Fang is unearthly, Phantom Ace has to use his finesse skill of 3d10 instead of his shooting skill of 4d10. Phantom Ace scores three successes, including a 10, which is going to be hard for Dr. Fang to dodge. Dr. Fang does manage to dodge two hits, but he still needs to make a one-die health check. Which he fails, so he's going to use his cover to roll again, and he fails that too. So Dr. Fang is injured. Whether it's self-preservation, a dedication to the mission, or perhaps a little bit of both, Lou decides he's going to move a full 12 inches. He is going to run toward the rocks and the major objective and the tiger shadow. Leaving Wang to wonder, hey, where did everybody go? So that's all the activations for turn four. Now we go to the recovery phase and we're going to start with Roswell. And unfortunately he doesn't recover, so we're going to have to give Roswell some first aid and a squeaky toy when this is all over. Next up is Dr. Fang. We'll see if he can recover from his bullet wound. And he does. So apparently he is a tough old bird and he just shrugs off the 45 caliber slug. So that is the end of turn four. Half of the Shadow Tong have been eliminated, but Dr. Fang and Shadow are very close to reaching the exit. So let's see what happens in turn five. So at the beginning of turn five, each team draws a fortune card and the Phantom Agents still have director status because we managed to put a bullet into Dr. Fang, even though he recovered at the end of the turn. But still, it's a moral victory. So for our first activation, we're going to move Gage into position to throw a wrench at Dr. Fang. Since Gage can't quite make it into short range, she's going to take cover behind this sign. Dr. Fang is unearthly, so Gage has to use her cunning instead of her shoot skill. In her case, that's a benefit because she gets to use 4d8 instead of 2d6. Gage scores three hits. Dr. Fang dodges only one, so he'll have to make two health checks. Which, unfortunately, he does. 
For our next activation, we're going to have Phantom Ace open fire on Dr. Fang. He'll be shooting with his finesse of 3D10 versus Dr. Fang's dodge of 3D10. Phantom Ace scores a single success, which Dr. Fang promptly dodges. For our next activation, Sergeant O'Malley is going to turn on his heels and move in on Wang. At short range, Sergeant O'Malley is going to shoot with 4d6, and Wang is going to return fire with 3d6. So Sergeant O'Malley shoots first. O'Malley gets three successes, and now Wang throws a hatchet in return. Wang gets two successes. O'Malley could choose to block one with one of his own successes, but decides not to, so O'Malley will take two health checks, and Wang will take three. Wang fails his health check and tumbles to the ground. O'Malley fails his health check and also falls, so it was a sacrifice play. Hearing the gunfire, Officer Flanagan finally gets off his butt and runs to the front of the filling station, but by that time, most of the enemies have been dispatched. So for our final activation, Roswell runs over to Dr. Fang and attempts to bite his leg. Unfortunately, since Dr. Fang is unearthly, Roswell is going to have to use his cunning, which is only 2d6. Roswell does manage one success, but Dr. Fang easily dodges. So that's the end of our activations for turn five, which means uh, the Shadow Tong now gets to move all of their people. So uh, Dr. Fang, despite our best efforts, shuffles off the board with a minor objective, and he'll be quickly followed by Shadow the Tiger, who's carrying a major objective, and then the Hatchet Man Lou, who doesn't have any objectives, but he's escaping with his life, and he's pretty happy about that. So even though Shadow and Dr. Fang escaped, the Phantom Agents were still able to protect three minor objectives, two in the back of the pickup and one buried in the pig pen. Plus, they were able to neutralize about 50% of the Shadow Tong, though uh, technically Oki Joe's demise was self-inflicted. And speaking of the Shadow Tong, we actually rolled one final recovery check at the end of turn five, so Sergeant O'Malley stands up, he recovered, and Wang also recovered. So Wang finds himself all alone, surrounded by Sergeant O'Malley, Gage, Roswell, and Phantom Ace. So it's quite likely that uh, Wang is going to be captured and taken back to the station. Okay, folks, that is our boiled-down version of the Pulp Alley livestream from December 27th, 2020, where uh, we played the Phantom Agents against uh, Dave's Nefarious Shadow Tong. If you enjoyed today's game, you should definitely check out the official Pulp Alley YouTube channel for a host of other great Pulp Alley gameplay videos. And of course, if you're a fan of skirmish-level miniature wargaming, we do invite you to uh, subscribe to this channel, Skirmish War Games, and of course, visit us online at our website, skirmishwargames.com. So with that, Happy New Year, everybody, and happy gaming. <laughs>